In this lecture, I'm going to introduce the power triangle, and in the next video, I will show you an example of using it. So the power triangle relates the real power, reactive power, and apparent power together, and uh, this is what it looks like. So it's a right triangle with the apparent power uh, on the hypotenuse, and we have um, phase angle theta here, uh, and that is the power angle that we saw in the previous lecture. So that's uh, the phase angle of the voltage minus the phase angle of the current waveforms. And then on uh, the horizontal axis, we have a real power, and on the vertical axis here, we have uh, reactive power. And um, so uh, this is a triangle, and uh, we have the relationships as shown for Q, which is a symbol for reactive power. So it's just the uh, hypotenuse times uh, sine of theta. And then real power is the uh, hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. So now this is a right triangle, so Pythagoras applies. So uh, the square of the uh, apparent power is equal to the square of the real power plus the square of the reactive power. Now, when theta is positive, look as shown in the triangle, uh, then uh, the circuit uh, is inductive and Q has a positive value. So the reactive power Q would be positive in an inductive circuit. However, if uh, theta is negative, as shown in the drawing on the right, uh, then this indicates a capacitive load and Q is negative. So, uh, reactive power um, what it is, it's power that flows back and forth between inductors and capacitors and the source. Okay, So it's not consumed like power is consumed in a resistor. And the average value of this reactive power is going to be zero because what gets stored gets uh, uh, released back as energy into the circuit. And um, so, and this of course only applies when the uh, circuit is stimulated by an AC source. So uh, just in summary, it's exactly the same formula that we saw in the power triangle. Q is the RMS voltage times the RMS current uh, multiplied by the sine of the power angle. And the interesting thing to note that the units are in VARS, which stands for Volt Amperes Reactive. Okay. So that's the units for uh, reactive power. So it's different than watts. So now, um, let's imagine our load was purely resistive. Then our phase angle would be zero because there would be no phase difference between the voltage and current waveforms. Okay, And then the sine of zero is zero, and that would make Q zero. So that means that there is no reactive power in a purely resistive circuit. So now, let's look at real power. So real power is the power that's absorbed, or more accurately, dissipated as heat in uh, resistive circuit elements. So then, our equation from the power triangle was the RMS voltage times the RMS current times the cos of the power angle. And for real power, our units are in watts. So now, uh, if we consider a load that is purely reactive, so it's either a capacitor or an inductor, then the phase uh, angle, or, or sorry, the power angle is going to be 90 degrees. Uh, that means that the current is going to be leading voltage by 90 degrees, or the voltage is going to be leading current by 90 degrees, depending on whether it's capacitive or inductive. And the cosine of positive 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees is zero, and that would make the real power zero. So there's no real power in a purely reactive circuit.
It just has inductors and capacitors in it. And then we have our definition of apparent power, and that is the measurement of the total power in the circuit, and it's the um, uh, apparent power is just the RMS voltage times the RMS current. So there's no power angle uh, in this equation, so it doesn't matter what the power angle is when you're calculating apparent power. And uh, there's also another twist on the units. Uh, the units for apparent power are VAs, and that stands for volt amperes. Okay. So let's uh, consider the power relationships. So if we have a general impedance, okay, so it's some general impedance that has some resistive component and some reactive component, um, we can apply these uh, power relationships uh, as we're going to see in this slide. And uh, on the right we have a representation of uh, the complex impedance, the general impedance on, in the complex plane. Okay, so if we're going to calculate the real power, then what we're going to do is, uh, all we need to do is use the resistive value of this complex impedance, of this general impedance, okay, and multiply it by uh, the RMS current squared, okay? So this is Ohm's law, and it only applies to the resistive component for real power. Um, and of course, the other formulation is uh, V squared over R, and so uh, that's another way of calculating real power. It's always positive. Units are watts. So then, for reactive power, uh, it's very similar, except now we're just using uh, the reactants uh, denoted by X, so it's the RMS current squared multiplied by the reactants, or the RMS voltage squared divided by the reactants. And so since X can be positive or negative, then um, uh, Q can be positive or negative depending on whether the load is capacitive or inductance. And the units are in VARs. And then finally, our apparent power um, is the hypotenuse, okay, so it's the square root of the real power squared plus the reactive power squared, okay, and then, uh, uh, you know, with just some simple algebra, we have uh, other relationships, so we can solve for real power if we know the apparent power and the reactive power, and conversely, we can solve for the reactive power, if you know the apparent power, and the real power. So now, uh, we saw that uh, the Q uh, represents a, a reactive power, and uh, we can map uh, power in the complex plane. And we can denote the power as a complex phasor. So it's a power phasor. And uh, this is the relationship. So it's exactly the same triangle that we saw before, except now it's uh, specifically mapped to the complex plane. So then the complex phasor is one half of the phasor voltage multiplied by the complex conjugate of the phasor current. So what we can see, uh, just to represent it in a polar and rectangular form, if we uh, let the voltage, the phasor voltage be some voltage magnitude and some phasor voltage and let the phasor current be some current magnitude multiplied by the current phase angle and then the complex conjugate of the phasor current is going to be the same thing except we flip the sign on the phase angle. Okay, So that's how we take the complex conjugate for a vector. Okay. So then, we can write the uh, complex power phasor as one-half uh, Vm with a phase angle of uh, theta V times Im, phase angle of minus theta I, okay, that was the complex uh, conjugate, 
And then we will get Vm times Im divided by 2 and uh, at a phase angle of uh, theta V minus theta I. And we get up in the end Vm times Im divided by 2 times theta, which is the phase angle. Right? So that's the definition of the phase angle right there, these two. Okay. So then, in polar form, we can write the complex power of phasors equal to Vm times Im divided by 2 at, a, at the power angle, at an angle of the power angle. Or, if we're using RMS voltages, then that 2 drops out, as we saw in a previous lecture. And we can convert the complex power phasor into rectangular form using trig. And so the complex power phasor will become Vm Im divided by 2 times cos theta. The imaginary part will be Vm Im divided by 2 multiplied by sine theta. We also have the same representation in RMS voltages on the right. So if we know the complex power phasor, then we can easily find the real and the reactive and the apparent powers. Okay, so this is uh, the diagram of the complex power phasor, and we can simply find the real power by taking the real part of that phasor. That's obvious, and that's the real power. Similarly, the imaginary component of the complex power phasor is uh, reactive power, okay? And the apparent power is the magnitude of that phasor, okay? Square root of p squared plus q squared, and that reactive power. And then the relationship to the power factor, which is cos theta, the cos of the power angle, it's going to be the real power divided by the apparent power, and the apparent power is also the magnitude of the complex power phasor. And in the next video, we're going to show an example of using the power triangle.